everyone welcome back to the channel thank you as always for tuning back in if you're new here welcome i'm leila the normal reader and today folks we are looking at another deck as part of my deck review series we have here the mystical lenormand by regula elizabeth fichter and her illustrator urban trosh i believe they are swiss and uh, Urban Trosh has a specific way of illustrating the cards and so I think that's why she chose him. She also chose him for other decks. As you can see I've got the deck and I have her book and they both have the same cover. It is one of the cards, it is the star card. Um, the deck is the 36 card basic deck Petit Jeu and it comes in a regular carton box with a small, I would say even a tiny guidebook and the cards are very colorful and it is the book that has the meat of her method, of her approach um, to Lenormand. So let's look at all of these pieces in turn. Um, the deck is very beautifully illustrated. There is no question that a lot of care and art and thought has been put into this deck. It is very colorful. The colors have, I don't know how to put it, but they have a special feel. And I think it comes from the fact that Urban Trosh uses Ek Tempera to design the cards. And so they have a very natural looking color and a range of color. Every single card comes within an arch like this, and each arch is pretty unique or the frame, if you want to call it that. We have the card number, and sometimes they're really not visible. Like it's really hard to see them on some cards. Um, and others, like the bear, I had, a hard, I had to switch on the light on different angles, even my photography lights, you know, to, to see the number 15 here. And then others, they appear more. Now, I think that's fine because most of the time we don't really use uh, the card number. We also have obviously the main symbol within the frame or the arch, like I said, and we don't have a pip card associated with each card as you would normally find in the Petit Jeu, but we do have an astrological correspondence. And I think actually Elizabeth uses the word correspondence to refer to this. And she has, I believe, the signs, the planets, and... I think other, other correspondences that have to do with astrology and um, the zodiac in association with, with each of the cards. And she has them covered in a separate section at the back of the book. Here we go. The astrological correspondences of the cards. So we have the planets, the, um, the houses, and the signs, which makes perfect sense because that's 12 by three, which covers 36 cards. There is something really powerful about Lenormand's 36 number. Um, it covers the calendar, it covers the signs, it is divisible uh, by nine, which is a very powerful number. So the whole numerology in the number of cards in the Lenormand is pretty powerful. And so it's easy to associate with it all of these different uh, different things. So let's go ahead and go card by card so that we see them um, in detail. So you see how beautifully illustrated they are. This is the rider. This is the clover. This is the ship. The house. The tree. These are the clouds. And this is one of those cards where it might not be very obvious at first. You can see there is the light side of the clouds and the dark side of the clouds. The fact that one is black and one is white really brings out um, the differences between the light side and the dark side and how the light suggests that things are looking up and the dark side suggests that things are becoming more nebulous. I would have liked the clouds to be a, a bit bigger on the card. We'll find that some of them are like that, but most of the time the main symbol stands out. It's still a really good contrast between the light and the dark here. This is the snake. This is probably my favorite card of this deck. Um, I really like the alchemical symbolism that is associated with the snake. I think 
The snake is often seen as a very negative card, but the snake is also the symbol of medicine and wisdom. And so the biblical associations tend to be negative, but in many other mythologies, the snake is very powerful. And in all cases, everything in nature, in my opinion, is essentially good. I love the sun and moon on either side of the snake, and I love the egg that protects, uh, that the snake is protecting. The snake also has a crown. So there's a lot of amazing symbolism that I think does more justice to the snake and the power of the snake as a symbol of medicine and wisdom than other decks do it justice. So this is hands down one of my favorite cards, not just of this deck, but of all decks I've come across. It really um, resonates with me somehow. This is the coffin, appeal to the Egyptian uh, mythology here and all things uh, pharaohs related, the scarab and the tombs, uh, interesting mythology here. This is the flowers, the scythe, and again, there is that association with harvesting. I personally don't really associate the scythe with harvesting. Um, I tend to see it more as cutting. That's totally fine. This is the whip. Uh, so this is a Christian symbolism that has to do with self-flagellation. Not my favorite um, illustration, I have to say. I think it's a very negative affirmation to self-flagellate. Uh, but I guess it exists in some psyches and some mythologies. And so it is captured here. And there is a reference to, to this Christian, um, you know, to, the, to Christianity through the cross. And I would say this is the Christ in the back. These are the birds. Two birds uh, are represented. Uh, re using two birds to represent the birds is very common. Um, and it is associated with the number two. This is the child. And it is pretty playful. You have you know, some mystical elements like this little elf here. I love these in the mystical Rama, some fairies in the background. Uh, there's, there's a lot of that detail that comes through. This is the fox and the bear. And this is the star card, which is on the cover of the book and the cover of the guidebook here and the deck uh, box as well. This is the stork, and notice the representation of the child coming out of the cup here. Very interesting uh, symbolism. Again, that's probably why it's called the mystical Lenormand. A lot of mystical imagery comes through here. This is the dog. Very interesting to see a crystal ball. Very nice. This is the tower. Very clear on the cards. Um, this is the garden, the mountain, and this is the road with someone actually walking down the road and you see the fork in the road very clearly. This is the mice. There's three mice here eating away at cheese. This is the heart and a very clear reference to the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve and the trees and some animals here. Very clear reference. This is the ring card. Again, I would have liked the ring to be a bit bigger. Um, it is held by this bird. I feel it doesn't stand out enough in, uh, against the card, for, whereas the ring is actually the main symbol of the card, but it's still very beautiful. The colors are so, you know, so balanced. There is just something about Urban Trosh's technique that makes the colors really um, balanced somehow and very natural looking. This is the book, more interesting symbolism. The letter carried by a dove. This is the man card and the woman card. And this is the lilies. So these are the lilies in the background here. Again, I feel the symbol doesn't stand out as much as I would like on a card, but it's still an interesting Japanese setup here. So a lot of this imagination and mysticism comes through uh, in the deck. This is the sun. These are the Egyptian pyramids. So again, this uh, context of the, the desert. This is the moon. There's a shepherd and his sheep. The moon is so beautiful. There's a face on the moon. Really interesting illustrations. It's really uh, engrossing, you know, to look at these cards. They have a lot of detail. This is the key that comes out of the egg. I think there is a mythology in, Northern, in the Nordic countries. Um, maybe the Finland, Denmark, and Sweden area in their mythology, in their ancient mythology, I think there is a reference to uh, the world 
starting out of an egg and so and 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 the dragon mythology here and so the key is is captured within this egg really interesting and this is the symbol of the sun quite interestingly enough associated with number 33 i believe this is the sun um these are the fish card uh, this is one of the cards where the number number 34 doesn't barely appears and this is the anchor and this is the cross it's uh it looks like a tombstone so a very mystical very beautiful imagery very amazing colors um for the most part it's easy to see the symbol but some of them don't stand out as much as i would like for example the ring in here so these are the cards looking at the guidebook the guidebook that comes with the deck is tiny it is printed by agm urania a well-respected uh, card printing company and an old one and uh, Regula covers all of the cards. She has a few layouts in here, the past, present, and future. She has the grand tableau and the portrait. And she also, yep, that's it in here. She has other layouts in the book, I believe. And she gives a brief meaning for each card. So these are always good to start off with because they tend to be short and they help you anchor uh, an essential meaning to each of the cards. And that's it. It's a very short guidebook that comes with the deck. It's really uh, the meat of her method is in the, in the book. So let's have a look at the book. The book is also called Mystical Lenormal. They have exactly the same name and it is quite a big book. What is special about it is that it is a complete two card combination dictionary. So for each card, Regula covers every single pair, which I also do in my master. And it's always fun to look at these because it expands your imagination of the possible ways to interpret two cards. So I like to have them because um, sometimes I feel it, an interpretation is really odd, like I would never see it this way and it, I feel it's completely unrelated to anything and others, they make perfect sense. So I like to look at them. So the book covers, as you'd expect, uh, some introductory uh, material, and then she gets into an overview of the card meanings. So these are keywords similar to the ones you find in here for each of the 36 cards. I think it's a really nice way to present the initial keyword list. And an initial summary keyword list is very common in many um, many Lenormand guidebooks. I really like this presentation where there's each of the cards and under it there is um, there are a few keywords. And then she gets into the details of each card. So it's very generous material. There's a description of the card. Uh, there's more about the image. Um, and then there's an interpretation. And then she has a few correspondences or what I call correspondences. She has the time factor that she associates with each card. She has characteristics and also personality and an astrological attribution. I call these correspondences as in the different ways it's possible to interpret the cards across different areas. And then she gets into the combinations. So she has them for every single pair and she has them in a very handy uh, bullet format, which makes it very easy to look at and to look up. And so she covers all 35 cards for each combination and so on until she covers all 36 cards. So it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty generous book. It's pretty abundant. And then towards the back, she gets into the layouts. She has a few layouts and she has also some preparatory material, if you like, or accompanying material that comes with laying out the cards. So for example, the kinds of questions that you might ask, uh, do I need to be especially aware of something? Am I healthy? You know, interesting questions. Does my partner suit me? Things like that. She talks about the personal cards, the man and the woman. Uh, these are the significators, as I call them. And she has some preparatory suggestions, you know, how you would prepare for a reading, the setup and things like that. This is the back of the card, very beautiful. Uh, the thing about the back is that you can't tell if it's upright or uh, reversed, whereas Lenormand is read upright always. 
She has a Q&A here, and then she has a suggestion for how to deal with negative uh, predictions. She suggests, we do not always receive the answers we would like to. You should consider carefully before you begin whether you will be able to deal with the answer or not. I think this is pretty wise before you sit down for a reading, especially if it's a big deal and it worries you. You might want to run in your mind several scenarios and ask yourself, well, what if the answer is that? How would I feel? What if the answer is that? Then how would I feel? And so on. She goes through a past, present, future. Her past, present, future is a single card for each of the time periods. I like to use three by three because I feel with Lenormand there's more meat when you have them in combination. This is the Grand Tableau, which she calls the Great Spread. This is the Piquet Tableau. And she also talks about the portrait. I think here she's focusing on the portrait around the woman, uh, which is a technique that you would apply in a Grand Tableau. And this is another illustration for the idea uh, that you look at the lines that have the significator in it. In this case, it's the woman. And so you would read the column, the row, the diagonal, and all of these are important lines to read in a tableau. And this is another version of the tableau. This is the, the tableau of nines. So there's nine uh, rows, uh, sorry, four rows of nine cards. This landing strip, I really appreciate this spread. I've covered it in the blog post that I've, uh, that I've also written up for this, uh, for this deck. You might want to check it out. And I like the landing strip because it is about, um, it's, it's a Lenormand spread that has Lenormand characteristics, but it is also a spread that's focused on a specific way to achieve a goal. So she suggests that you start by putting a personal card and then your goal at the end of the line. And then in between, you would draw the cards randomly, and this will tell you how to achieve your goal. And so it's, it's uh, one of the rare spreads that I've come across that is that has a specific objective as opposed to just being a tableau that you can use for any question. And at the same time, it uses the Lenormand technique of reading cards and sentences. So I really like this one and I covered it in the blog post as an example. And then she has another spread with three cards, which is just like a spread you can use for any, um, any question. She has another spread that she came up with, she calls it the poodle spread. I think this is something that's related to um, a German tradition. She says, the name derives from Goethe's Faust, where Me Me Mephistopheles takes the form of a black poodle. Okay, so there's, so that's where it comes from. Uh, Goethe's Faust has a black poodle, and she was, she was inspired to use it for one of her spreads. And each of these, uh, card positions has a specific meaning, I believe. She says the four cards on the pause represent the problem, and then the card on the head is what you'd like to have, and then in the middle, I think there's another one. So number six is the card on the tail is consistently mixed up by this wishful thinking. That's interesting. She says poodles are fun-loving creatures which often wag their tail. Okay, so it sounds like this is something personal to her imagination and how she sees uh, the cards represented here. And then the card in the middle represents the origin of your problem. This is an interesting way of breaking down the cards. In a tableau style layout, you don't really, you know, you don't really assign these kinds of indications to each of the cards. It's much more common with tarot. And covering fate is another such layout. And this starts off with a cross, and then there is more cards that are used in, um, in ways to answer specific questions again. So what protects you, what frightens you for your home and others. You might want to explore these if you come across this book. And then she has one last spread, which is called the roller coaster spread. And I guess this is a way you would combine uh, the cards in like this zigzag kind of way. And she has a start and a destination. So it's similar to her landing strip uh, spread. I believe that's what she called it, where you have a starting point or you have, uh, here you have signifiers and a significator that you would have consciously chosen out of the deck to represent you and the goal. And something similar here, except I think in this case, um, they are randomly chosen. 
as part of the, uh, the roller coaster. So interesting spreads that she covers. I encourage you to explore them, to expand on your, on your techniques and your exposure uh, to Le Normand. And in her appendix, she has correspondences. Now, something that's really special about the deck illustration is that every single card has animals associated with it. So when she asked Urban Trosh to illustrate her deck, she, uh, she gave him a lot of freedom, apparently, to illustrate it as he envisioned, but she wanted him to include animals on every single um, card. So if you pay attention to the deck, to each card, and you get into it, you explore it, you'll see that there are animals on every single card, even if the card itself is not associated with an animal. So for example, this is the cross, and it seems to have crows. These, I would think, are crows or ravens. Um, the stork, um, I would say this is not, a, maybe this is a stork, it, it can look like a stork, or another bird with the anchor, and there's a dragon with the key, and so on. So in her appendix, she has uh, a reference of which animals were associated with which of each of the 36 cards. So this, I think, is something that is meaningful to her as well. She has an index for the animals, and she has the astrological correspondences like we touched on at the outset. And so this is the um, work of Lenormand by Regula Elizabeth Fichter in her mystical Lenormand deck. It's a pretty deck. Um, it's one of my keepers. I keep it in my collection, even though I don't use it a lot, but it is nice to handle. The cards are good. The illustrations are nice, very engaging, and uh, the quality is fine. And also her work and her approach is really interesting as well, especially her uh, wonderful effort of covering every single two card combination, which is always fun to look at when you're looking to expand your interpretive imagination and your dictionary of combinations. So I have, again, like I said, a blog where I've detailed uh, the Mystical Lenormand more, so I'm going to link that for you to have a look through. And I'll also have a link for where you can purchase the Mystical Lenormand in case you want to add this to your collection. So thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions about this, leave them uh, for me in the description box or write to me. And I look forward to our next uh, video together. Thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm.